Hi, I'm Arthur Parsons. I'm Head of Design at TT Games in Knutsford. And I'm Matt Ellison, Senior Producer at TT Games, and I'm based in the Maidenhead office. Thank you guys for being here today. If you guys could tell us a little bit about what you do at TT Games and explain the game you're playing. Uh, yeah, so uh, as, as head of design, I basically um, uh, have a, a group of designers who come up with all the silly ideas for the video games that you guys play. Um, we like to uh, make sure that we're being very fun, very witty, um, put lots of great, enjoyable moments in there. Obviously, lots of Lego, because everybody likes Lego. Uh, and when it came to Lego DC Super Villains, we wanted to make an experience that was just all about being bad because it's good to be bad and we know that everybody loves to play the bad guy and my role is more uh, along the lines of working with the other partners we have so I work with Lego um, and make sure that they see everything that's going into the game um, and sort of work with them to make sure that all the Lego sets that they're making sort of that are up and coming are coming out and are included in the game um, and then I work with the other partners as well work with Arthur and his teams, um, so yeah, work with everyone to make sure the game's as good as it can be. And keeps me in check. Right? Yes, exactly. All right, so Someone has you, to try. Yeah. <laughs> can you tell us what we're looking at right now? I see a character creator. Can we uh, hear a little bit more? Yeah, so um, we've had a character customizer in a lot of our video games in the past, um, but we've never ever put it front and center uh, in quite the way we are in LEGO DC Supervillains. So what we wanted to do is give players the, the sort of like that buy-in, the ability to create their own villain um, from all the great uh, Lego pieces that we've given them. Uh, and that villain's gonna be integral to the story. So it's not just uh, a fun free play cosmetic thing. This is a really important part of the story. Uh, and this character, you not only do you get to change the appearance, but you'll see you can also change abilities. Um, and the character is actually so integral to the story because you absorb powers and you upgrade as you go through the story culminating um, in, in kind of a vital decision, um, which I won't spoil for, for players, but it's a really, really great feature. Um, and so far from all the focus testing we've done, everyone loves it. Everyone loves being able to make their own villain with their own powers, whether it's a speedster, whether it's someone who's super intelligent or super strong and, you know, just all the great, crazy sort of combinations you can make. It's, it's great fun. While you're creating this character, just about what you're doing in the process. Yeah, so as you sort of see, we've got loads of different things that you can modify. Uh, I've sort of randomized to give ourselves a bit of a base to work with, but then if you want to change the hair color, you can change the hair color, and it goes into sort of all the different elements that make up the character. So I can change all the different hip pieces, or I can just choose a plain one, and then I can change the color of that. So I've got a bit of a theme going on with this character but I'll yeah I can choose any of these colors mix it up and, and they're all official Lego colors yeah as well. exactly so, yeah so um, um, you can make whichever character you want and this character does become a part of the story as yeah well, which... but but as you progress through the game also you'll unlock um, extra pieces so every time you unlock a minifigure those pieces get added to the customizer and you can keep basically upgrading and changing and modifying your character all the way through the story you can upgrade the powers um, you can also just do weird, crazy stuff and, and, and make your character just super bizarre. But the most exciting thing is, straight as you go into the game, after you've created your character, you'll actually see your character. So you'll see shortly your character is right there with Lex, with Commissioner Gordon, uh, with Mercy. Um, and it's really, really exciting. So can you tell us a little bit about the story of the game? So for someone who's new to playing a, a Lego game, um, yeah, so the story's original. Um, it's, it's kind of inspired by um, some comics that we like. Um, and we've basically made a story where the, the, the bad guys are, are, are right there at the front of the story. Um, you're going to get to play as all of the best DC bad guys. Now, the story gets quite complicated, so I won't, I won't go into like a, a full-blown explanation of the story, but um, everyone knows the Justice League. The Justice League are naturally DC's good guys. They get replaced by um, what we're calling the, uh, the Justice Syndicate, who are an Earth-3, like, evil version of the Justice League. So they're there, sort of marauding around, pretending to be heroes. They're actually even worse guys, I think is the best way of describing it. So um, as villains, you're actually fighting really bad villains. Uh, and the story kind of crescendos when Darkseid gets involved. Um, 
and then things things go from from kind of bad to worse because villains can't be heroic as much as they want to try. Um, so it's just a great story. But it, like I say, it's all grounded in um, in actual comics, which is which is great. And we co-wrote it with DC Comics themselves. So uh, I think any fan of DC will really appreciate all of the sort of detail that the writers put into that. So just looking at this, do you see elements that you actually worked on? Uh, like, let's look at this level specifically. What can you tell us about it? <laughs> we, yeah, so this is the very opening level of the game. This is the demo that uh, we've got here for consumers to play. Um, and yes, the idea of this level is that uh, Lex is sort of orchestrating the breakout of Strikers Island Prison. Uh, and also he's just uh, taken the character that we've created and is sort of taking him on board and taking him under his wing. Uh, so this is sort of the first steps in the story. Uh, in terms of the gameplay and all the different things that we've got to do here, obviously we've got the security guards at the prison who are trying to stop us. We've got to try and find a way to get past them. And we've got to find a way to get out of this prison right here. Um, and the cool thing as well, from a, a development standpoint, um, I remember seeing this when it was just a grey empty box. Um, and, and, and as we've iterated, because it's the first level, there's a lot of focus that goes into ensuring that this is really accessible, really playable, and, and people don't get roadblocked at all. So there's a lot of things in here that, that have been slightly tweaked, slightly changed as we've iterated and, and, and got people to actually play the game. So like the big desk at the very yeah. start, that used to be hidden away to the left, and people missed it. So we kind of moved it to the middle where people can't miss it. You've got things here like the silver Lego. You've got Johnny DC in the corner. So there's hints that will come up if you do get stuck. Um, they'll kind of help explain what it is you need to do. So as Lex, you need to like look at the silver Lego, tap circle, he'll fire rockets. Um, and it's great seeing this level in a kind of near finished state because we have kind of been through several iterations of this just to make sure um, when players play this for the first time they have just a really slick seamless experience. That's all very interesting uh, as we progress through I know this is a, a time demo can you uh, uh, give us some more commentary on as we progress and as we're progressing through what you worked on and just what you're doing giving us little tips and fun facts that'd be uh, amazing. Yeah so so even even little things like this so so uh, yeah Matt's just done the the silver lego puzzle at the top You'll notice now your characters will automatically be at the bottom here. Now that that isn't like a mind-blowing thing, but for people that are new to the game, the fact that they don't have to navigate their way back down means they don't get stuck and they don't get lost. Um, and we find things like that out through doing player research and focus testing. Um, the same here, we've got um, silver Lego going yeah, across, we've got this silver Lego here. Well, when this level first began, like life, the, the, the silver Lego was really, really small. And we found that people were, were not realizing that the silver Lego was there. So we made it into one giant piece of silver Lego and then instantly people find that it's easy to understand. Um, and again, you know, this level we've seen so many times and, and we do this with all of the levels, all the sections of the game. We just make note of the things that people get stuck on and we refine and we, we refine as we go through the game. Um, and again, like here we see some great combo moves. All of the characters have great combos, um, they have great abilities. The idea being that we want people to be excited when they unlock a new character because they'll be, well, what's this character do? Um, and that, actually another example here of, of something we changed in, during development. Um, back there, there's some gray Lego. There used to be a silver Lego puzzle there, but we found people getting really distracted by it because they've just learned all about silver Lego as Lex. So the simplest thing to do was remove, remove it. It was unnecessary. Um, we want people here as uh, Solomon Grundy and Cheetah to be excited that they've got two great new characters and we want them to just get straight down here into you know, another new mechanic and, and then we'll teach this ability which is uh, Grundy's ability to throw Cheetah because um, all the big figs can actually throw the, the minifig characters um, from these sort of pads. So Cheetah gets thrown up and then there's twirl poles, again a mechanic we've refined because we wanted people to just find it nice and easy like the sheen on the the lego there you'll have noticed that's just a, a, a little call out to make sure people don't get stuck so there's so many little touches most players who've played a lego game probably won't even notice these things but but players that are new to lego games hopefully they just will without realizing it real you know they'll be able to play it experience all the things we want and and it's it's almost second nature because of all the little touches we've done 
So as we come here as well, you know, Mercy's got a new mechanic there. She can light things up. Um, a nice, actually, a lovely little touch here is, um, so that we, we have a mechanic here where we actually ask people to perform a certain move to jump, um, which is you jump and then you'll tap. But we also allow the player to just press and hold X because we found during fo <laughs> <laughs> we found during focus testing that actually tapping, releasing, and then holding was was rather complicated um, for new players. So just tapping and holding is, is far more intuitive. So again, we just modified and, 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 and balanced these things as we go. Uh, I love this mechanic, X-ray mechanic. We've had this um, in LEGO Batman 2, I think was the very first time we, yeah. we showed this mechanic. It's just a really fun mechanic. Uh, fun, very, very simple puzzle solutions. Um, and again, kids react and respond really, really well to little puzzles like that. They like the simplified challenge, um, but at the same time, you know, it's something that, that doesn't need too much sort of education, player education. Yeah, that's another mechanic where you can't actually get it wrong as well. So yeah. when, once you've turned it enough times, it stops so that you can't turn it anymore. So even kids who don't really know what they're doing with it, they'll eventually sort of push the button enough times and get their way through the puzzle. Yeah, I mean, we know it's there when like all the AI characters automatically ran to their spots. It's, it's kind of like, the, we're trying to make the AI intelligent. The, the game doesn't play itself, but the, you know, the game, the AI don't sort of like get in the way. Um, trying to just keep it nice and slick, nice and, and, and simple for people to play so they can focus on the cool stuff. Um, and the, one of the cool things here is, you know, for the first time, uh, Matt is gonna be able to, to power up his, his, you know, his character, which we didn't really comment too much on, but it's kind of a weird shield carrying, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's like something from Lord of the Rings, Met Harley Quinn. It's a medieval clown. Okay, it's a medieval yeah. clown. There we go. Yeah. It's as easy as that. <laughs> um, so we have some uh, energy, energy absorption mini game here. Um, Going to collect these orbs, power your character up, which is a, like a cool moment, and then you get to unlock a new ability. Um, and then this is really cool because you think, okay, I've just unlocked a heat beam, but you can then customize everything about that beam. So this is the depth of the customizer. So it's like, right, what type of beam should we have? Should we have like an electric one? Should we have a, a, a more focused one? Um, there's some kind of weird ones. That's quite a cool one. Oh yeah, there's a, like a big powerful one. But then you can go and change the colors, right? So we go for a purple, try and keep some sort of theme with the shield. <laughs> Um, you're, you're really saying there's a theme to all of this. Yeah, it's all um, thought out. Uh, and I also, well, yeah. although the character has an eye patch, you can make the beam come out of the eyes. <laughs> but yeah, you can, you can make the beam come from eyes, from your weapon, from the hands, from a single hand, both hands. Um, it's, it's just really cool. But the depth of customization is just amazing. It really is. We'll go right hand, I think. Okay. And you can come back at any point and change your character. If you're not happy with something, you do yeah. get to come back and change it again later. With nothing sort of set in stone yeah. uh, as you're sort of going through and doing this stuff. And I love as well that the first hint that we showed is like it's a default beam. And then when you see the hint the second time, it's actually the way you've customized it. So people go, okay, yeah, that's, that's me. That's me that made that change. And this is how I'm going to have my, my character react. I might manage to sneak that uh, yeah. <laughs> to <enjoy> in. <laughs> you very nearly uh, bit the dust there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to take these guys out. They're uh, causing problems. And again, in the in the finished game, you actually get rewarded for for how you beat up the um, the enemies within a, a given level. I was gonna say the bad guys, but obviously they're not because no. you're the bad guys. They're the good guys, but. Um, you, know, you get rewarded for that and then you get stud multipliers, um, all of which helps collect those studs so you can unlock other cool stuff within the game. So again, actually, this is a good example of a, a puzzle that we kind of iterated upon. So um, the kind of slide match puzzles is something that um, we've had in games before. We find people sometimes get stuck on them. In, in the finished version of the game, you'll actually get a hint if you don't move the cursor for a while and it'll pulse to kind of help people so they don't get stuck. But for those people that want the challenge, you know, 
the hint is slightly suppressed, um, so you get both sides of the coin. It's yeah, this, pu this puzzle right here is flashing to show me which bit I need to do next. So, so the first time you do this puzzle, it really does help you get through it and uh, yeah. makes you realise what you have to do. Because it can actually through. be challenging. Yeah, they can. Although, although I have also seen six-year-old children just go click, 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 click. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you know, game really young gamers are so intelligent, um, which is why it's so important that we work closely with them and we, we kind of bring them into the office, bring them into the studio, sit them down with the game before it's finished and, and get them to tell us what they like, what they don't like. Um, and that really kind of factors into everything that we do within the games. So here we go, so we've done one side. You've got to get over there again now, Matt. Oh yeah, I've done the And again, done you'll, the you'll, you'll notice that the characters, again, were, were, were repositioned when the camera moved. People will not notice that but it just helps with player guidance. It's just, yeah, it means you don't have to navigate Lex or whoever you took up to the top all the way back down again. Yeah. So it saves time and any confusion that might come from that. That's, that's brutal. <laughs> I do like Solomon Grundy. It's just such a great character. So here we go, up we go is Lex. So pull this and this is uh, what Lex has been trying to do in this level is uh, find Metallo and free him. So he's the ticket out of here, basically, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. And this is this is this is one of my favourite moments in the game. I know it's really really early, but um, so the, the Justice Syndicate have, have never really been exposed to, to many people, um, but we get to sort of see the Justice League in the game. It's like okay, we everyone recognises the Justice League, but we, this is kind of where things kind of get more exposed in the game and I, I, I really like the fact that we bring all of these characters together. I like in a second that he's uh, using that kryptonite doing keepy uppies in the background as well so yeah. always nice to see what's going on in the background of cutscenes. Well that's it yeah for, for people that are, are regular Lego players they'll always see those hidden things in the background. You get it here as well as they whiz off the, the, the lady gets knocked in the water and the cutscene guys do a great job of just sticking those little touches here, there, and everywhere in the background. And Grundy's face is just a picture. <laughs> here we go. So, Booyah. It's Cyborg. It's Aquaman. Green Lantern. Actually, with this timer, you're not going to get to see the crime syndicate. Because obviously, that's after this section, isn't it? Um, My, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no chance you're speed no. running this in two minutes. <laughs> so um, you we'll get to see a little bit of Joker and Harley. In yeah, the, uh, next section. And again, it's so good. And you know, I know, like we've made we've made three Lego Batman games, um, and, and we've we've had Harlequin and we've had Joker before. But with this being a, a DC supervillains focus game, we've really gone to town on on what makes these characters, you know. Joker, what makes this character Harley Quinn, and given them more focus than ever before. Joker's got a great new goon control uh, mechanic, which actually you just, might be just able about to see that, get yeah. to show that. <laughs> um, a little bit of you know, Kevin Conroy's Batman, which is always good. And the voice acting's great, Matt, right? Yeah. No, yeah, it's, it is really good. We've got Tara Strong playing Harley. Um, and yeah, it's, it's amazing throughout the game, uh, the voice acting that we've got in here. Isn't it? Uh, really helps bring all these characters to life uh, yeah. in the Lego form. It's quite funny hearing Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy oh, playing yeah. sort of yeah. slightly less serious versions. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Of, uh, <laughs> roles. But again, I don't know, it's something that, 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 that people are watching might not know. Every time you see anything Lego in the game, you could actually make that. They're, they're all legitimate Lego builds. Our like team of builders in the office, they, they, they really work hard to make sure everything is, is legitimate. So here you go, here's Goon Control, which is a great mechanic. You can actually go and, and hire uh, bad guys and, and get, the, get them to, to follow you around and, and perform actions for you. So you can get them to fight for you, but you can also get them to do mechanics like this. So in this instance, Matt wants them to, to make a, a, a human trampoline. Oops, sorry, Matt. That's all right. um, so you, you can jump on, on the trampoline and it allows you to get up. But there's other cases where they'll make uh, beams to walk across, they'll make human ladders. Um, it's just a really cool mechanic, and I, I think people are going to really enjoy that. And I think your speedrun is about to come uh, yeah. to Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get to show uh, the graffiti mechanic, which is the next, no. next thing behind here. Might, 
No, we're going to run out of time. But that's yeah, great because it, it leaves <laughs> more things for people to, to kind of play when, when they actually get the game themselves in October. So um, there you go. Thanks for playing. If people like what they're seeing, go and pre-order the game. Uh, the game's out October the 16th uh, on PC, uh, Switch, Xbox One, PS4. You can go out there, you can get uh, the deluxe edition, which has some awesome extra secret stuff. Um, and I just hope people enjoy it when it comes out. This was Matt Ellison and Arthur Parsons from TT Games. We hope you've enjoyed uh, what you've seen, what you're watching. Please uh, you know, subscribe to the LEGO Gaming channel for all of your LEGO DC supervillain needs.